Well, guys, I want to talk to you today about what kind of, of uh, knives and saws you pretty much will have to have to do home beef processing or home deer processing. This is more specifically towards beef than deer. And we have a good selection. This first one right here is a skinning knife. Uh, it's made by Ontario Knife Company. Made in USA. You can see it's set around, it's got a little rust on it, but that, that'll clean up good. This, this knife is real thin bladed and can be very, very sharp. And by far is the best skinny knife that I've found. The second one is just your common everyday butcher knife. It's great for uh, processing large quantities of beef or meat, cutting it up into chunks, uh, more especially pork if you're doing sausage or even hamburger. And this also made by Ontario Knife Company. You'll find these, this is an Old Hickory brand. And I'm pretty sure that's what this is, but it's not it's not stamped. And then we'll come down to <clears throat> boning knives. I like the plastic handled boning knife. This one's called uh, made by Swabo. Let's see if we can find the stainless steel. Uh, and it is NFF, NSF rated right there I uh, can't really see it, it's been sharpened so much but <clears throat> this is what they call a flexible blade bladed knife and that is my personal choice for deboning you can get around uh, bones very easily the second one is a stiff bladed knife deboner. As you can tell, the back of the blade is very thick compared to the flexible blade one. Just a good comparison up here. Uh, it will not flex. This is a very good knife for getting in areas where you got to jab it in to cut it out. This knife is made by Forstner Company and they also make plastic bladed knives both flex and stiff blade. I would recommend getting at least one of each. Uh, a lot of times I use the stiff blade one for cube, you know, cutting out cube steak, but for hamburger getting around big joints and bones, I'd rather have the flexible one. <clears throat> and then we get to the main meat saw you're gonna need. You can buy these online. Uh, actually, we've got. I think I got one right here I bought several years ago, this black handle one. Uh, from, it's got a real thick blade on it. Uh, I like the thin bladed ones better. You can tell this blade's uh, maybe 3 8 thick. It works a lot better to me. And you'll be using this saw to cut the carcass down the middle and to cut uh, the hind quarter. What we, and you know, I'll show a video of it later. But uh, on the hind quarter, you'll saw through the sirloin part and you'll separate the backbone from the sirloin. And it makes it a lot easier to handle on the saw. <clears throat> now as far as big equipment we'll get into that later 
you don't have to have a commercial type meat saw they make them with the grinder built into them i don't know how good they are you don't have to have the five horsepower grinder you can get by with a two horsepower grinder it just depends on how much meat you're going to be doing and how much time you got on your hands cubers uh, if you like cube steak you'll need a cuber and basically it's just a row of teeth the steak falls in between them as it's turning and it serrates each side of the steak if you don't like cube steak you can get by without one if all you're going to do is roast hamburger and steaks uh, just a decent table saw and a decent grinder is all you need I have looked for another one of these I haven't found another one just like this most of them you see is kind of like a butcher knife with the blade curved upward and I don't I like this because you can cut on this edge and on this edge so you can really get in behind the hide and do some good and it's quick so guys I hope this helps you out on what kind of knives saw you need uh, basic basic tools you can if you got a cooler of course you gotta have a cooler first that's the main part beef you have to age you can't just kill it and cut it up uh, if you want you can I guess if you want bloody hamburger but that's it needs to drain it needs to age and so you just about have to have a cooler of some sort now it don't have to be you know a very big one as long as it's big enough to hold a whole beef in quarters this cooler here will hold two beefs it'll hold one down this side and one down that side I don't have the measurements but I uh, it's got a see it's got a rail system and it's got hooks on it that you hang your quarters from and down this side this is a pretty big cooler you don't need one this big a you could probably get by with an 8x8 or a 6x8 something like that I, I probably wouldn't I'll probably stick with at least 8x8 eight eight. this is probably a 8x10 or 8x12 but 8x8 eight eight would be plenty big so that would be your fist <laughs> <coughs> so that would be your first major purchase They've all, there's all kinds on the market. You can find them used. You can buy them brand new. They come set it up. Uh, you're probably looking at maybe eight to ten thousand dollars for a cooler set up. Uh, saws. You can find these like this. I found them for less than a thousand dollars on eBay. Usually they're three phase so if you've got single phase wiring you're going to have to get a either a different motor or a converter grinders between $1,000 and $1,500 cubers same about the same price knives are cheap you can buy these these boning knives for roughly $10 to $12 a piece the skinning knives are a little bit more the butcher knives are probably a little bit less a good saw, uh, you're going to spend about 40 50 bucks on a good saw. Uh, so anyway, uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more beef processing videos. We've got approximately another month and a half or so to uh, grow this calf out. In between times, I'm going to try to get up some more videos on different equipment, uh, winch system, and stuff like that. So stay tuned for more.